Hey guys, Spike from the Off Good Shop here. Today in this video, what we're going to be talking about is how to size your inverter to the cooking appliance that you want from induction cooking, ovens and things like that. Or if you've already got an inverter, how to buy that sort of stuff and, and pick those items. So we'll jump over and share my desktop. And here we go. So this is a monitoring platform I use for, this is actually my house. We use for grid connected solar systems monitoring. Now I am actually grid connected and um, we use a grid as a backup at our place. These monitoring platforms, with the off-grid stuff, there's very few products that do this, and this is why I love this product. So this is actually called Sonolink. So if you're actually, it works from a 4G or yeah, it works from 4G. So you do require to have phone service um, where you're monitoring. This actually helps you monitor individual circuits. Now you can install this if you are in an off-grid situation to monitor individual circuits and stuff like that. Or if you're grid connected, this is one of the best monitoring platforms I highly recommend using is this here. So let's jump over here and I'll show you how it works. So I'll get rid of my total consumed and I'll tell you what everything is. So uh, the blue is the hot water. At the moment, my place, we're doing a test for the hot water. It's allowed to come on whenever it wants. So it just turns on and off. As soon as you pretty much, your kids have a shower, um, the hot water comes on. So we've got no smarts at the moment with our hot water system. Uh, we normally use a product called Catch Power. Uh, which is an Australian made product for all the smarts for hot water. But at the moment, on a test, the catch power is turned off. So, doing some testing. So, the red's the air conditioner. So, we'll get rid of that. As you can see, we use air conditioner for heating. It's been turned on Monday. So, obviously, the kids are up nice and early there at 5 30, they're up. Aircon goes on for heating. And um, yes, yeah, so we'll get rid of that there. Now, some other individual soaps I've got. We'll get rid of the hot water. You want to see that. We're talking about kitchen appliances here. Power points. Whatever PowerPoint that monitors, that's actually things which are PowerPoints in the kitchen. Um, we actually will get rid of the solar, get rid of that there. Makes this stuff a bit bigger. So as you can see, we'll put the solar back here. As you see what time of day we start to sort of, and we sort of cook before the sun's up. Well, it's actually the sun's actually up, and our my place a very bad change. So it's actually eight o'clock. Pretty much before my solar system starts producing anything. Now lose the sun, pretty much usable power. Yeah. At three o'clock there, the system's almost still on two kilowatts. Quarter to four, yeah. At four o'clock, my solar system, the house is in the shade, it's got nothing going there. So we're very heavily shaded. But as you can see here, the other appliances, so we'll get rid of the solar. It's something to think about. If you're in an off-grid situation, what are you going to be doing from solar when you're cooking with these appliances? And what are you going to be doing from your batteries? And that's the thing to think about and consider. Now we'll get rid of the solar here. Have a look at these other two. So, uh, oh, we'll get rid of the fridge freezer, not the solar. There's a solar up there, get rid of that. Okay, so you can see my fridge there just tickles over. I think the most that spikes on this day here is 36 watts. Now, this fridge is one of those ones with the uh, automatic ice makers in. They have a function, which you can see it's probably cold. Here we go, you can see the fridge here. Jumps up to two kilowatts to instantly freeze the ice, which is ridiculous. Um, so you can see it comes on pretty much every night. That's actually Amazing it wasn't on, but pretty much every night it comes on and you can really hear it when it comes on there. So something to be aware of if you're buying those fridges with those um, automatic coolers in them. It actually didn't come on last night there, so I don't know what happened there. Let's pop over Tuesday morning. Okay, come on, uh, come on late, late in the night, so here we go. Okay, so let's get into this stuff. So if you're looking to buy an induction cooktop or an oven, think about what time of day I'm gonna be using it and what other price you're gonna be using around about the same time. That's the thing to consider. Now. This here is actually my oven. It's actually just my oven. And this other one over here, which is kitchen, is the cooktop. So in the morning, you can see that the oven got cranked up. Uh, it was using two kilowatts. So something was getting cooked for breakfast in the oven there. And then dropped down to that one, one kilowatt and sort of finished itself off and got cooler. With an oven, we actually didn't require to heat itself up. Now, when choosing an oven, I highly recommend get one of those ceramic ones um, with that pyro feature in them. The pyro feature uses a ton of energy. It's one of those self-cleaning, you turn it up, it cranks, pulls a bucket load of energy um, for the whole time you're pulling. I think ours pulls about 7,000 watts or 6,000 watts when it's on. Uh, it's crazy. Wouldn't highly recommend buying it for that feature off grid. <laughs> the reason I recommend using it is because of the ceramic inside or the, the um, because of the ceramic inside, what happens actually holds the heat. So once you get hot, we've cranked it up. These are really not good times, so 720, Around at 7.30, so for 10 minutes it was on flat out and then dropped down and for the rest of that cook, 
you know, sort of from 7.35 to 8 o'clock, so another 25 minutes, the oven just trickled away to kilowatt. So rather than the oven come on, put a whole heap of energy, it just trickles away there. So it's something to think about. Now, the thing to consider here, I'm gonna get rid of the oven cooktop for a moment. That's actually, that is the kitchen. So I'm pretty sure that's our induction cooktop. So something was turned on at the same time, so we'll get rid of that. So you can actually see something was turned on at the same time. So that's actually just the, so that's a thousand watts itself. And then the oven cooktop, that's another 2000 watts. So we tick on the whole consume there. As you can see, it really jumps up. Because so in that moment, even though the cooktop was pulling 1,000 watts, the oven was pulling 2,000 watts, the rest of the house was pulling 4,000. Now, if you're looking to size an inverter in an off-grid situation, you know, a 5 kVA inverter, you'd be really pushing the limits in this moment of doing this. I'd probably recommend going eight as a minimum. Um, that's pretty much what most suppliers do off-grid. They sort of do a four to a five, and then pretty much everyone goes up to an eight, something to think about. And actually have a look at the specifications of the data sheet of how long It'll actually run those loads for something to think about and consider. So, as you can see there, yeah, it's pulling 4,000 watts around at once. So, we'll jump over in the afternoon, look at them in the afternoon, which is more we're using more of the cooktop. So, I'll show you the cooktop we actually have at our place. So, we have an induction cooktop and we have a three burner one like this. This is about it. Quick view. So, we have a three burner one. So, the way they pretty much work is this here will normally pull about two and a half thousand watts. I'll actually zoom on that to make your life a little bit easier to see it. So, yes, yeah, so these induction to cooktops will at two thousand, two and a half thousand watts for this one. This one here is normally at fifteen hundred watts, and this one here can be seven fifty to a thousand. And it's really hard. Like, if you look at the specifications on these, I'll just quickly have a look. We'll go to the technical specifications. They say nothing about the energy usage. I've looked for this a million times and all this sort of stuff. Customers say, hey, this is good. I'll look it up, there's nothing. You have a look in the manual. Pretty much in the manual, they will give you a bit more specific details, but something they don't really advertise. Now, with induction cooktops, what I, what I really unfortunately doesn't show with my house here is the induction cooktop actually comes on and off. So they pulse, they go on, they heat for a little bit, they turn off. They pulse, they turn on. So mine actually sort of doesn't show that. Because they, these these monitoring devices read in five minute increments. So, um, so if you think we have a night here, so let's say we're cooking here overnight, the oven's cranking up again, got the oven going again, and so the oven's on two thousand five hundred watts. So let's jump down, and the cooktop's on fourteen hundred watts. So we've probably got two things on. So you think about when you're cooking, you've got your oven, you've got your main meal in your oven. You might have potatoes and peas in separate pots on the cooktop. So. I've actually a bit of a trick. My wife hates me doing it, but anyway, here's what it is. <laughs> so I actually, I cook my potatoes in the boiling water. Once they're cooked and ready for mashing, I then tip the water in the frozen peas. I actually don't turn it on very rarely do I turn it on. Sometimes you're not required to boost it because while you mash the potato and things like that, you're saving energy. You're not running those two devices at once. And then you just, you know, you can give it maybe a little quick boil. And the thing with these induction cooktops, they have a boost function. And within 60 seconds, you can boil water. So they're great for cooking peas and things like that. So that's how I do it. That's my little trick. So as you can see that if you, when you are cooking more things, so you've got your main meal in the oven, you've got your, um, you know, say mashed potato in one pot, then your peas in another pot, you're cooking, you've got all three devices working. And in this situation, my house, we'd be requiring at this point in time, oh, got that spike. Oh, come on, stay there. Wow. Probably plug the car in. This is an electric car getting charged for this, this amount of energy at my house. <laughs> um, or the hot water could be on too. Let's have a look. No, not the hot water. Air, con air conditioner's not even on. So, so it's definitely electric car that's got plugged in there, which is, um, yeah, so that's electric car getting plugged in. So we'll get rid of that there. So for me in my situation, we'd actually require an eight kVA inverter in that moment. Probably wouldn't cut the mustard. Um, so, you know, we'd be looking at more a 10 or a 15 kVA inverter to be able to run all that stuff at once. And look, very rarely have people out there got off electric cars off grid. And if I was off grid, you know, I'd be charging my electric car every day, um, not doing it when I get home, plugged it up in the afternoon. So I've actually got some smarts going in, uh, which after doing this video, I'll actually make sure you get that work. So I've actually got some smarts from my electric car, so it doesn't turn on and actually charges only from the off peak, which is cool. Um, so yeah, so guys, I hope that's been helpful with uh, with cooking and thinking about sizing your inverter and what your appliances can do. Uh, it's really hard with, when buying this sort of stuff from um, 
from Harvey and all the good guys and stuff like that, getting the exact appliances. A lot of the a lot of the specifications are pretty much say out to 32 amp breaker that's got to go onto it, or you know, uh, a 20 amp breaker to run your cooktop, things like that. That actually really don't say how much energy it pulls at any one time. And if that's what it says, it's pretty much the easiest way to do it is all you do, if it does say a 32 amp breaker, 32 times 240, your voltage. So it's 7.6 kilowatts. So you just times your volts, times your amps, that's gonna give you the watts of what size that you're gonna require. And the reality is, even though I think this cooktop is seven kilowatts, now this cook, when it is seven kilowatts with this cooktop, um, you've got all the things on at once, so you run them all, and you've got the boost function cranking to get there. So you actually have two boost functions, so you actually boost two of these at once. Now, just think about, is that something that you're going to be doing in a, in, a, in a real world situation? Will you have all three things going? If you do, you might want a bigger inverter. Um, this is what all really comes down to, just think about how you use your appliances and how you cook your meals and things like that. The reality is the best thing you can do is if, you know, we go back to our solar here, the more you can do of a day in an off-grid situation, I highly recommend most people have a grid-connected inverter for an AC coupled on bigger systems. That gives you more usable power of a day and you can do more things of a day. So if you are going to do an oven cook or a long cook, something like that, you want to maybe try and get in the oven when the sun's still out so you're not doing it from your battery. So hope this has been helpful, guys. Any comments or questions, we'd love down below to know what size inverter you've got or any questions about this stuff. Or if you're looking for an appliance you're unsure, just post, post the link in the description below. We can check it out. We can get back to you. Thanks and have a great day.